Welcome back. You had to know where this was going. You had to. So they had Armageddon Part 5 today. This is the end of this grand five-part arc. And at the end of last week, I was like, so why are they doing this? Why? Why are they going to have a Part 5? And after having watched Part 5 and taking notes, as you can see, I have no idea what any of this did at all. Okay, so the color difference is for when a scene changes, although sometimes it's not really a scene as much as it's a cut back and forth and back and forth, so a lot of changes of color. Uh, it opens at Joe. Joe talking to Barry on the phone, because Barry's like, you're not dead. Joe's like, no, I'm, I'm not dead, I'm good. Sort of like the time cop scene where he's like, hey, you're alive. And he's like, yeah, since I was about uh, two years old, uh, you know, which is a fun scene in Time Cop. It's a fun scene in Time Cop, it's less fun here. Time Cop's a great movie. Go watch it. Um, and so Barry runs in and hugs him. Every time Barry rushes in or out of a room, I think, does, does he <laughs> does he make sure there aren't other people there because he doesn't have his mask on? Does he? It doesn't matter. I, I still think everybody in Central City knows damn well that The Flash is Barry Allen. They're just playing along. It's like Smallville with, uh, with Clark Kent. They all know that Clark Kent is Superman. They just, oh, wow, you just arrived and Superman was just here. It's so weird. They just they just play along, um, and then he <laughs> he says to Joe, and this is the line that I think is so funny. You don't remember either. Yeah, he doesn't remember being dead, Barry. You're right. He doesn't remember being dead. I ah, oh, uh, <laughs> it's my favorite. It just that scene is just so good. You don't remember either. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to remember being dead. Uh, Joe takes the news of the reverse flashpoint well. I thought, you know, when somebody tells you, hey, by the way, um, Thawne came back in time, murdered you, uh, murdered everybody, and uh, and was going to marry your daughter, and but I fixed it. And Joe's reaction is kind of a, meh, cool. Like, <laughs> there's, there's no reaction to any of this stuff. And I'm not saying there should be like an over-the-top reaction like people would actually have, but some kind of reaction would be nice. Uh, Damien Dark was there too. I, I guess he was brought there. And my first thought was, so the whole Bebo thing and, and Legends, are they undoing that? Thankfully they didn't. Uh, he was drawn into 2021 by the time portal. It seemed to want his time stone. And it just, uh, I, I don't know. But again, we'll, we'll come back to that. So the next scene, Thon's at the police station. Uh, with officers open fire on him. Because I guess when you see Thon, you open fire. I, and it doesn't work. It's not like they can hit him with a bullet. So people must have told him to shoot. Didn't tell them it was going to be pointless. And so uh, Barry explains uh, what happened to the team, which is where you don't remember either. It becomes weird because he hadn't explained to the team. Uh, but it's, it's fine. Uh, they didn't remember. So he explains to the team what had happened. Uh, Barry shows them future tech, which is... I, that's a no-no. You bring back tech from the future, you you don't show it to everybody. Look at this. This this is something from 10 years from now. Do they not learn? Like, I wait for Gideon to come in and just, you know, like the evil Gideon to come in and just blow them all up. Because that should cause, like, anachronisms in the timeline, right? So if you watch Legends of Tomorrow, you know that there's anachronisms in the timeline. Uh, in comes uh, the, the evil version of Gideon, and she don't care who you are. So, yeah, apparently that didn't cause any kind of ripple in the timeline. Who knew? Um, Thawne then zaps the police at the police station. Uh, they're just all down. Uh, and then Green Lantern's daughter is, daughter is there. Mia's there. Uh, she's looking for her brother. Um, and, and then we get into that the Thawne's temporal fading, meaning he's disappearing like Barry did when only his hand was disappearing. Except for Thawne, it's his chest that's disappearing. I don't know. the temp it, it picks and chooses what it wants to disappear um asks barry to save him then why why go to the police station and make the cops angry you know where barry is it's not like fawn wasn't a part of team flash for a while so he knows where they are so i i don't i didn't understand any of this it was like why would he go to the police station and cause a ruckus with the police like i wanted to make a scene so you'd show up you don't have to. It's not necessary for the plot line. You don't want to die. You're wasting energy and time. Why don't Why don't you just you just go to you just go to Star Labs? You know where they all are. Uh, anyways, uh, this is where Green Arrow's daughter Mia meets the team. Uh, timeline may kill Thawne for good. 
And I thought, yeah, no, it won't. Uh, and then we go to the, the daughter punching a, a bag. She's got green tape on because green arrow, so everything's got to be green. Uh, William, her brother, is missing. I have no idea where this is going. I, I don't, no, no idea. Uh, I've been looking for two years, and then she says to Iris, sometimes blood for blood is the answer, which I, I think that belongs on Christmas cards at this time of year. Uh, angry words and dramatic music follow that. doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, we find out Thawne has two hours. He chats with Caitlin, brings up Ronnie. So you're talking to somebody who may be able to save your life. And what do you do? You go, hey, remember your boyfriend that died? Remember, he was your fiancé. He sucked, and I murdered him. So remember that? You saving my life yet? Remember all those people I murdered? Might not be a good idea to do that. So Caitlin's like, all right. Um, and and she when he brings up that she's... Uh, she's she's been wasting her life. She's like, they're family. Family was brought up a lot on this episode. So the first couple episodes, everything was about level up, level up, level up. And now everything's about family. It's family. It's like they're transitioning into Fast and the Furious with this. So, uh, Caitlin then decides we need to let Thawne die. That's where that scene ends. So Barry goes to talk to Thawne. And Thawne says that taking over Barry's life was the best way to hurt you. Okay, the best way to hurt Barry was to take over his life, but you didn't. You killed. You said you killed Barry as a kid, so he was dead. So you're not hurting Barry if he's dead as a kid. I just, I and then and then the whole well and now and then Mia told Iris she didn't have a chance or a choice to marry Thon, and I'm like, why not? What did he have mind control? Like Thon never had mind control. It's I, any anyhow. Uh, and the, yeah, Barry chats with him again. I'm not sure why Barry's down there talking to Thawne. Like, he's he's a murdering psychopath, sociopath. He, 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 he we're going to talk about it being a bad guy. No, no, you're not. We've been through this for eight seasons now. Uh, Thawne's jealous that Flash stole his greatest moment. He said, like, did he say two centuries in the future? Okay, sure, absolutely. Says he'll find new ways to kill Barry if he lives. So he tells Caitlin... Man, it was great that I murdered your fiance, and he tells Barry, if you save my life, I'll murder you. Again, he's not not good at this. So Despero comes in like the ghost of Christmas future and says Thon should die because he's seen the future and Thon has to die and it's time for Thon to die. Sure. There's more debate on letting him die by Team Flash. Iris tells Allegra, uh, Chester, that they don't get any say. So they're like, we probably shouldn't let this guy die. And they're like, shut up. And that's it, because they're new. And I'm thinking, hasn't Allegra been part of the team for years? Didn't you just put her in charge of, like, a, a part of your newspaper? It's not a good time to tell her, hey, noob, shut up. Uh, Chester, it's fine, whatever. They they mentioned Cisco in the episode, not like he showed up. I'm guessing maybe they wrote something in for him, and he looked at the script and went, yeah, I'm not coming back for that crap. Um, so... Joe arrives at this point, and then he takes Iris and Barry off to another room where he gets entirely too angry. Uh, he's mad that they're going to let Thawne die, and, and Barry has this dumb line of, Thawne, Joe killed you, which is true in another timeline. And his answer is, you always have a choice. And he, he, said, he said it so angrily that I'm like, is that how it was written in the script? Because Joe seems really angry when he says this. Like, you always have a choice. You know, the, wait. There, so here's the thing. If they don't intercede, if they don't intervene in this, then Thawne fades away. He no longer exists. The timeline is writing itself. And I'm not sure why writing itself involves murdering Thawne. I no idea. We didn't see time rates or anything like that. Need some time rates from Doctor Who. That's what we need in here. Um, and then, then, and then he goes to Barry. He goes, you've already figured out how to do it, haven't you? And it's like, where where did you get that, Joe? You can you can read that in Barry's face. He's right. Uh, Barry's figured out that if they take take Thon's speed away, he lives. I can't figure out why that lets him live. I've 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 gone over it in my brain and decided just for plot reasons that means that Thon doesn't have to die. The timeline is trying to kill Thon, not his speed, or else it would be his speed that was disappearing. So I I didn't I didn't get that. Uh, Despero decides to connect to Mia Queen for a Thawn murder. Uh, Frost then talks to Barry in a different scene uh, in Team Flash. Despero just shows up in the room, and nobody goes, holy crap, this guy just showed up out of nowhere. Who is that? Mm -mm. Remember, the first three episodes didn't happen. They've never met Despero. Despero just poofs into existence, and they go, ha, huh, this is Despero. That's... 
if he poofed into this room right now, I guarantee my reaction would not be, hey guys, look, it's Despero. How's it going, dude? I, it's just, no. Mm -mm. And uh, then he teleports the Flash somewhere else, because, sure, why not? Um, then there's, then then Mia shoots a, an arrow that screeches when it hits the, hits the floor, because why not? Sure. Um, so that downs Allegra and Frost for no reason. Mia could have just walked by them. She's, they're part of the same team. Um, then we go to Flash, all of a sudden knows Despero's backstory. It's just, it's like, you were the desperate, you were the leader, you weren't the person that was, that was trod upon, you're not here fighting as a hero, and blah, I'm like, how do you know any of this? And Despero's like, well, you figured it out, you did. I, how did, what, how? I, nothing, there's, we don't know anything of, we don't know the backstory for Des. When Despero went to the future, he found out apparently that Eobard Thawne was the bad guy, and so he had to come back and kill Thawne, and as soon as Barry's like, I don't know if we need to murder Thawne, he's like, that's it, I'm going to murder everybody. I, okay, sure. Um, because why not? Uh, so then we, then we get into a CGI battle, which might have been the worst one I've ever seen. And, and I mean, I've, I've seen when Savitar was pulling really fake looking Flash through the, 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 the speed tunnel. It looked awful. Uh, this was worse. Uh, then Iris was faster than an arrow. Mia shoots an arrow, and Iris just ducks out of the way. That's a pretty fast Iris you got going there. Um, and, and so Mia attacks Team Flash, meaning that if Iris hadn't ducked out of the way, Mia would have killed her. So she goes from zero to murder pretty quick, and we'll come back to it. So then we get back to the horrible CGI battle, which was looking very fake. Uh, and then Despero's possessing Mia, so he's in two places at once. Which, was that established in the first three episodes, that he could be in multiple places at the same time? And I think back to the battles in the first two episodes, and I'm thinking, he would have won those really easy if he'd used all these superpowers he's suddenly manifesting in this episode. Um, so, he's speaking through her, which I thought was weird, that her mouth moves and Despero's voice comes out. I... I I don't know. So his vocal cords are, are take the place of hers, or I, it, it didn't make any sense. And then Mia just fights him off because love. And this the only thing I come up with is that they go, "Hey Mia, have you tried fighting him off?" And she's thinking, "No." And of course, Despero saying, "The girl's not in here." And of course, she fights him off, and they they don't even explain it. And then Despero kind of goes, "Well, that's over. Why?" Why? <laughs> so he he goes to Barry. Well, my pawn failed. So why don't you just take over somebody else? Why don't you just do something else? And just I don't even understand. So uh, Despero teleports Barry back. Now, if you're going to teleport somebody, where are you going to teleport them to? Why not teleport them back to all their allies so they can try to conspire to stop you? That's what Despero does. I, I don't know. I would send Barry to Antarctica or... I mean, I know how fast he can run. I know he can get back quickly, but... Please screw with him. Don't put him back with all his buddies. If if it moves if it moves through time, why not move him back to the 18th century? Let him run his way back from that. But no. No. Despero just puts him back with all his buddies. Uh, Despero then decides, well, if I have to kill the city to kill Thawne, I'm going to do that. Which is kind of an overstate. I, I don't understand... Uh, and then they talk about Project Whammy, which is what they call the, the ability to take away the speed that Thawne has. It's a terrible name. A uh, few minutes until the timeline resets. This doesn't make any sense. So Despero is willing to blow up the city so that he, he stops Thawne from being saved when if he just left it alone and did nothing, it's possible Thawne would have died and Despero getting involved might have made it easier for them to come to the decision to save Thawne's life. So I don't... And does that mean that in the future they had saved Thawne? And and so he came back to talk to them and he... I, like none of this is ever explained. So it doesn't, doesn't, really, doesn't really matter. Uh, Flash then uh, um, I was redirecting energy into his gold boots. People are excited about the gold boots. I'm not because Flash... He gets suit upgrades, and those upgrades are talked about for a couple episodes, and then it's just the same old Flash. Sure, the suit may look different, but the, the tech sometimes just gets completely forgotten. You're like, hey, that tech will come in handy in the future, and it doesn't. So, then they say, run, Barry, run, because that's what you say in every episode. Uh, Despero's blowing up cars, because if you're going to blow up the city, you got to start with lighting some cars on fire and flipping them, I, I guess. Uh, Flash 
runs up a building while fire's chasing him at the speed of flash. So that's some fast fire. Uh, Barry comes off the building, uh, drop kicks Despero, and somehow that severs his connection with the fire of, I, I don't know, his fire. It doesn't matter. Somehow they figured out they could block out that, that power that he gets from this fire thing, even though I don't know that they said which direction it comes from or any of that. I don't think any of that was established. And they just put it in the boots, because sure. And so he boots him, and there's the connection to the flames gone. And then he says, by the moons of Kalinor, you'll pay for this. I really wanted Barry to say, actually, we destroyed the moons of Kalinor for these nice boots here. Aren't they nice? Yeah, these are these are Moon of Kalinor gold. These are nice. I like these are nice. These are fun. This is so you don't have Moons of Kalinor. They're, it's all in my boots. These are nice boots. They're Kalinor boots. You like my boots? So <laughs> it's just as dumb as the rest of it. They might as well have, honestly. So then they do the speed zap on Thon. I've got the the asterisk here because the episode should end here. It should end here with Thon's negative speed force being gone. I don't know where it went, but they took it out of him. Because, sure. The funny part is, they said during this episode, well, like Black Lightning did with you. But it didn't work. So, it didn't work on Barry. But Thawne's going to get his speed back. So then Thawne says, you took my life and left me in hell. And then he's just gone. Okay, I'll talk about that. Uh, so Damien's at the bar where they go to party after. Damien doesn't know why he's still here. Uh, Mia doesn't kill him. Uh, Iris helps Mia with with William with his, her search for William because sure that's her brother and like I guess I don't know where this is gonna go because of course Mia the the daughter of uh, Green Lantern they or Green Lantern Green Arrow I knew I was gonna make that mistake Green Arrow uh, the plan was to have a a series where you had her and a couple of other young women uh, as superheroes working together and it just it never happened uh, they decided not to do that. I want to say Birds of Prey, but that's not what it was. Uh, but yeah, so it, it, it's weird. I don't know where the Mia thing is going. She says she'll go talk to Felicity. I kind of felt cheated that Felicity wasn't in this episode because I talked about her a couple of times. I know longtime Arrow people don't like Felicity. I didn't watch Arrow in the later seasons, so I have no idea how aggravating Felicity got. Um, I love the actress. I think she's fantastic. I was hoping she'd be in the episode. And, and then they did the whole Chester and Allegra, well, they won't they, which made me want to uh, puke, honestly. Uh, and all I could think was, where is Thawne? Like, even... <laughs> okay, even without his speed, Thawne is capable of murdering people. Even without his speed, Thawne is capable of being a mastermind villain. Even without his speed, Thawne needs to be in jail forever. And so, he's just out now. It's okay, he doesn't have a speed. Like, he can't find... Uh, anyways... <laughs> I just uh, the whole time I'm like so they're just out partying Thawne's still out there he's he's murdered a lot of people he's willing to destroy the universe basically I'll just let the evil genius go because he doesn't have his speed anymore and he still looks like Harrison Wells and he's wearing Harrison's face but I'm sure that's fine and normal okay um so then uh Joe thanks Damien for help with the timeline it was weird that Damien's still here. Uh, Damien gives the stone to Joe, and that causes him to disappear. So he had a final task he had to do before the timeline takes Damien out. I thought that was odd. Like, I have something left that I have to do on this earth. Where, I, it's bizarre. So, uh, and yeah, and then he appears in, in another realm with Nora. So they're, they're passing, she's coming back to life, and he's on his way out because Nora was dead in this timeline, right? Uh, and then when Nora passes with Damien and Damien calls her Nora doll, Nora just appears at the party where Barry and everybody else is, I'm guessing because that's where her dad was. So she goes to where her dad was when he disappeared, except she's at the doorway rather than where Damien was talking to Joe when he disappeared. So she came out at the doorway rather because, which doesn't, it still doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and, and she was looking for Damien and she's all sad that he's gone again. And I thought, Wait, so Nora isn't, and I'm thinking about this now, so now Nora isn't a fairy godmother? Does that mean that now in this timeline, Nora and Ray aren't married? Does that mean that everything on Legends gets changed because this happened? 
Like, I I'm I'm bewildered by the whole thing because Nora in the timeline with with uh, with Legends becomes a fairy godmother, which is fantastic. Nora is a fairy godmother. Absolutely makes my whole day. I I love it. Nora Dark is one of my favorites, and uh, yeah, I I'm confused now. I'm really really confused. I I don't understand. I I don't get it. Um, yeah, I I don't I don't get it. I understand. I'm just looking here. I, hmm. I I don't. Hmm. That <laughs> kind of breaks my brain thinking about it. Uh, and then Barry toast Team Flash because it's what you do, and he's like, I don't I don't do this very often. Sure you don't. Uh, and then they go to the police, where the police are like, Boy, am I ever glad things are back to normal. What? All the police know is that Thawne was at the police station zapping people. Joe's not a police officer anymore, so how would they know things are back to normal unless they were watching Flash on TV? And then they walk by a picture from 2014, uh, the, a police photo from 2014, and then Bart and Nora, who are Alan's kids, uh, Barry Allen's kids, uh, they, they show up in the background of this photo. They look photoshopped in, so... I guess that's foreshadowing what's going to happen this season. They're going to go back to 2014 or something. And they're in the police. They're in the police picture, like really goofy, smiling. And I'm like, why would? What, how? I don't understand. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm confused. So I started out kind of confused as to why this episode existed. I ended up confused as to how this episode ended the way it did, and why the police would randomly walk around going, "I'm really glad things are back to normal." sucks in Central City for the police department. So many Central City police department officers have been beaten up, thrown in the hospital, or straight up murdered. That would be a tough job to fill. Alright. There you go. If you watched Armageddon Part 5, let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. And where the hell is Thawne? I just... <laughs> the show can't let Thawne go. They can't... They can't let Thawne go. Because... That's been the best villain. And even though they've they've completely destroyed any semblance of a threat, he is just a mustache twirling villain. Uh, they should go back to the French accent and, and the next time that he's on, they'll just they could just use the French accent and, and all of that when he was Sherlock. Uh, Sherlock Wells bring him back because uh, which I have to say, I have to say, uh, Tom Cavanaugh played it very well. He did. He he can make anything work. He he played this as well as he could. But you'd have to think reading through the script, he's he's got to be on some level thinking, I'm so glad I left when I did. I'm so glad this is the only time back. And again, Cisco, I'm guessing he was supposed to come back for this for at least a scene and said no. Just the way this was written, it sounded like that was the plan. And then just, no. I do not understand why this was five parts. It was not truly a crossover episode. Having Batwoman in it was no, there was no point. Having Black Lightning in it, there was no point. Ray Palmer being in it had no point. And Nora being in there at the end just confuses the timeline, confuses me. And now Legends of Tomorrow, I would think eventually cleans it up if they ever come out of the 1920s. And considering what's happened here, they might be better off staying in the 1920s because things are messed up in the future. But let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.